I hope you guys can hear me. It's been one of those weeks I've lost my microphone. I don't know what happened to it, but this week started out really good. Now I have kind of a situation going on. It's been a hard two days. I'm very tired. Then I'm going to spend the night and get up and be at the concrete dump site at 7 in the morning because the truck is full. We went, they locked the gates at 3.30. We got there at 3.38, so we weren't allowed in. So I'm going to spend the night, do it in the morning. I can't drive the truck as loaded as it is 60 miles back to Houston tonight. So anyway, but I got a lot done. Ricardo's been here for a couple of Day, so let me show you what was going on. This was our second day back working and while I had a long but kind of random list of things for Ricardo and his guys to help me with, the first thing was just supposed to be a quick safety fix on the front porch. Remember my list of how I prioritize work? Safety is always first and I really did think this was going to be a minor thing. Remember when Heather and I put hinges on the plywood that covers the front door and then she faux painted it so beautifully to look like real doors? The idea was that as we start tours, our guests could actually enter from the front instead of always having to come through the back door. But there was this one safety issue that's been bothering me and that's the hump right when you come up the front steps. It doesn't look like much, but it was an accident waiting to happen. I could just see someone walking up those steps and looking up at this magnificent entry instead of their feet and taking a serious fall. Insurance is great, but it's not a substitute for correcting known safety issues. That hump repeats itself across the entire porch, but this one right here at the front is really the worst one in terms of being a tripping hazard, so I really did want to get it addressed. My initial thought was that we could just remove the tile and shave down the concrete layer that's poured on top of the arches and just do a kind of a quick fix. Of course, reality is nothing like my plan. It never, ever is. The first step was to go ahead and remove the tile. I'm not sure it's original tile. I think the porch may have been repaired before, but still looks authentic to the Victorian era. It's the right color and the right type of tile and it could be original so I wanted to save as much as possible. Some of the tile was already popping off all by itself but of course some of it was stuck really tight. The guys used a small air hammer and started working on the tile to see what they could save. I was pretty happy with how it was coming along. Some of it broke and you know that's okay some of it came out intact but I already had an idea in my head to find a complementary tile and use the broken pieces in a mosaic pattern similar to what's in the vestibule or maybe recreate the Lee Kempner monogram logo at any rate we'll save everything that's removed until we have a final plan for the porch floor you never know what we might be able to reuse Once they were through getting the tile up, then they started digging around and removing the concrete right on that hump. And as things usually go, one thing led to another, and the area that they were removing the concrete got bigger and bigger. It was obvious very quickly that not only had the railroad ties or I-beams failed, the steel beams that run across, but the brick arch between them was severely compromised. So that, that arch buckled. I'd been working on kind of a detailed video of a new plan I had concocted to support the I-beams and save the arches, but it's clear that's not going to be an option. Anyway, once I saw the extent of the failure of the arch itself, I decided just to go ahead and bite the bullet and take out more of the concrete and find out once and for all if there was any hope of salvaging this porch floor. No one's going to be shocked to hear that the problem was very, very bad. That was not what I was hoping to see. In my heart, I 
probably already knew that this porch needed to be replaced or the floor needed to be replaced but it's another thing to see it with your own eyes those railroad tracks were rusted and deteriorated where they were embedded in those arches you've seen pictures of that well let's just take off the top layer and not touch the brick mm -hmm. and get it all exposed and then we'll take a look at it I didn't know how far back that rust extended. In some places, there's just almost nothing left of the beam. So we just kept going and going and going, and it was generating a lot of concrete debris and rubble. And you just saw the video where we had all that massive brick pile rubble removed with the skid steer and then our latest concrete dump fiasco with Ricardo's new van. And here we are making another big mess. At this point, I was kind of kicking myself for even starting this project, but you know, sometimes you just don't know. You have good intentions and you think you're doing the right thing. And I still think it's the right thing to try to correct safety issues, but now I've created an even bigger mess up here at the front that's going to take a very long time to fix. So for the foreseeable future, all tours are going to have to come through the back door. We've been operating that way for two years, so what's another year? It was obviously going to take a while, so we let Richard and Carlos stay and work on the front porch while Ricardo and I went to tackle another project that needed to be done. That project was the decking on the round roof area over that little alcove that I've been fiddling with for a while. Just to refresh because it has been a long time ago, but a big wind blew this flat roof off and I've been working on repairing the deck and putting on new fascia. It's really a two-man job because the polyurethane fascia board I purchased to replace the rotted wood is really heavy and it's going to take more than one person to handle it. And Ricardo's just the right guy to tackle this with me. So we got out there and got to work. In a previous video, I think I showed you how I made a template of the curve so that I could use it as a pattern to mark and cut the new deck boards. That was kind of a critical piece of getting this work done. We had a little more rotted decking to remove and then we cut new boards to fit and use the template to mark the curve with a pencil and then cut the curve. It, it worked really well. It's not complicated, but there were some other little problems to address. First, there was some rot at the end of the rafters or joist. I'm not sure what to call them since it's a flat roof. We needed something really solid to nail the new fascia onto. So those rotted joists had to have new lumber sistered to them, just like we repaired the floor joist. They're also four or five feet apart at the ends, and this new fascia is really heavy and it's very flexible, so we felt like we needed some additional places to nail, so we added some blocking. We also repaired some minor rod on the boards underneath, or the soffit, and there's just basically a lot of fiddling to get everything correct so that we could get the fascia board on properly. We worked, I don't know, probably a couple hours to get this done, and then we got some additional help. Carlos came and joined us, um, and it seems like it would be a bit of a tight space for three, but we really didn't have too much trouble all working together in that space. Even with three of us working, it took longer than I thought to get the work done. I would brought my skill saw to make it easier to cut that radius on these boards, but Ricardo's gotten pretty good about using his circular saw to cut the curves. He's had a lot of practice making those plywood parts or those forms that we do the arches on the porch with. So Carlos and I were going in and out of the window to grab more lumber and tools, and we just had to be careful of the lines attached to our safety harnesses because if you hadn't already noticed, 
all three of us are in safety harnesses because it is a tight space and it's a long way down and we don't want to bump somebody off. So we were tied down the whole time. Remember our motto, safety first. Even with my harness though, I'm a little trepid about being up that high in such a small space particularly, but Ricardo doesn't care at all. He's cool as a cucumber. You can tell just how relaxed he is from all those years of climbing all over scaffolding and working in such high places. I just don't have that kind of confidence or the balance to do that. I did remember to go and take the camera though and set it up on the flat roof and point it this way so at least I could get a video this time of the work being done. It was more than a little dirty working up here. We did all the sawing out there on the roof so the sawdust was everywhere. And as you can see, I did a lot of sitting on my bottom. That was my preferred working style. It does make me nervous to stand up up there even with the harness on. But we finally got all the decking in and all the blocking done and started on the fascia. And I apologize, as usual, I should have shown the product before we started putting it up. It's a really neat product. It doesn't rot, it doesn't warp, it'll hold paint, and best of all, it bends. And I think I told you before that McNatt Contracting came out and looked at this and they just could not come up with a good way to get a board to bend around this radius and have it stand up to water and not rot and be a problem. That's what happened to the other boards. To get the bend, they had taken a solid board and cut hundreds of little slots into it to make it flexible to bend. All that did was weaken the wood and give the water a lot more surface area to cling to and rot the boards much faster than a solid piece of lumber wood. So this is a much better product. And anyway, it's going to be almost completely covered by the flashing that will go on when the roof is put on. So none of it is really going to show. But I will get out here at a later point and paint it just in case some of it does. I had mentioned that it was a very heavy product. It's much heavier than wood. And it took both Carlos and I holding it in place so that Ricardo could have his hands free to line it up. And he had to lean way out over the edge and actually screw it into place. We wanted to try putting it up this way instead of going to the trouble and the really hard work of setting up scaffolding. And actually it went way better than I thought. Um, it wasn't that hard to do and it worked really well. And just as we thought everything was going really well and we got the fascia up, it worked great. We put the second piece up, we put the third piece up and then this happened. And this is where we get to the end and I say something that sounds very much like gosh darn son of a witch. We're about 10 inches short. We do it the old fashioned way. Fortunately, a 10 inch piece we don't need a lot of bend in it so we were able to use just regular lumber and fill in that space and call it quits we're going to use wood <laughs> We were working so hard that we lost track of time. By the time we finished, we missed getting to the new concrete dump site by about 10 minutes. Had we thought about it, we could have taken a break to go to the dump, but we didn't because we were just too focused on the task at hand and we, you know, we're not sitting there looking at our watches. <laughs> Okay, 
three people, five hours. We've done the roof. We came up 10 inches short, 10 inches short on our trim, but fortunately 10 inch isn't much of a radius, so we just used the one by six and we're done. So now it's on to some Gatorade <laughs> and to turn it over to the roofers. We are done for today. <laughs> Let's see if I push the button. Ricardo thinks my little air compressor is silly, but it works, and it's a lot easier to get up the stairs. How hard was yours to come up? Pretty hard. <laughs> Big is not always better. So there you have it. You can see, despite my situation with the concrete, it was a great couple of days. We got a lot done. That roof really needed to get done over the little alcove so that the roofer can come in and get that watertight so we can get McNatt construction back in here and get the windows put in that alcove. I know everybody's been waiting anxiously to see that happen. I have too. That's going to be huge for the house. It's also going to be really fun to watch those guys work and install those. They're going to do a lot of the construction on site. So be sure and subscribe and turn on your notifications because there's a lot of interesting work that's going to start going on here and you don't want to miss it. We'll see you next time here at the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas. Bye.